All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me get my mic a little closer here. All right. Part two, uh, finally has new bogeys. These are not detailed at all. They are not supposed to be. They're just supposed to be something quick that we made up in Blender in like five minutes. So don't complain. All right. Okay. They're trucks. They, they're okay. All right. Thank you. So we are going to talk about one thing and one thing only, and that is more things that you can do with the R46 before it releases, which it should release right after this video. Okay. Okay. I've already explained where the sounds are. All the sounds for the train, including the propulsion, should be in the base folder. Uh, the propulsion is for this train is called traction motors. If you have your own script that you would like to use, all you have to do is just change the traction motors uh, ID, disable the script, or delete it if you want to. It's all up to you. Now, if you have issues with this train, say it's colliding with something or it's glitching through walls or whatever, this train uses collision groups. It's what it uses to not hit other trains in C via D. The collision groups are actually pretty simple. The only collision that's really accurate and actually makes sense on the train is the floor because people need to stand on the floor, okay? So I will guide you real quick through collision groups uh, for this train. For those who don't know what they are, don't mess with them. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's fine. The floor is right here. You can see that the floor should be under collision group one. Okay, this is under collision group one, but if you select any other asset on the train, it's under collision group three. Why is this? Because two in my game is the rails, which means this down here, uh, is it this one? No, it's not this one. Oh, he didn't turn it on for the wheels. Cast, I'm gonna kill you. All right, so cast didn't enable collision groups for the wheels, which is great, but essentially you would set the wheels under collision group uh, one, or not one, uh, two, if you want your rails to also be under that collision group. Uh, the way you make collision groups, they're all right here. Just put them in order. So if the floor is one, name floor, and that's now one. Rails would be two, and now trains would be three. So if I click trains, you can see everything that's under the th third collision group pops up. I'm pretty sure you can drag these in a way. I don't know. No, you can't. So you just have to do it in order regardless. Um, which is fantastic. If you have collision groups in your game, it, there's a script you can run in the command bar. If you know how to script, then you could just type it yourself. If not, just comment on the video and I'll write it real quick and you guys could just paste it in here and it'll replace it to the number that you need uh, from whatever number that it is. But if, essentially, you can see that the floors on every car is in the collision group one. You can't really see it in this one, but it's selected somewhat. But yeah, so now that you guys know this, uh, this will prevent other trains from hitting each other if you disable some of these check marks. So trains don't collide with trains. Rails don't collide with rails, but it does collide with trains. Trains shouldn't collide with the floor. Uh, they shouldn't collide with the rails. And the, uh, what is it? Well, mm, rails and the floor. This is what this means. Floor shouldn't react to the rails and floor shouldn't collide with other floors. Uh, floor should react to default because default would be the player. So this will stay on. Uh, default should not collide with default. Actually, no, we'll turn that on. This will default. Uh, this will collide with defaults. Uh, it won't collide with rails and it won't collide with trains. So now it'll go through uh, the trains and the players, which is great. So how do I put this on rails? You make rails that actually fit this train and make sure that they're in between these balls. Okay. These balls will make sure that these things are spears will make sure that this stays within the rail. Okay, that's all this does, all right? After that, there's another thing that you could do. Well, Avion, I wanna make it an eight car train. Well, I don't suggest you do this because it's still using Joe's older version of the chassis, I guess you could say, not something that we use currently for our new trains. Well, I mean, technically it's the same, but we've scripted it differently so that it's more, uh, more or less uh, better for your performance. I wouldn't recommend you do this, but if you do want to, very simple solution. All you got to do, watch this. I'm going to blow your mind. All right. Duplicate these four cars, let's say. Or actually, you know what? Let's make this a six car R46. I'm not even going to go with the whole thing. Right? And take this last car. I'm going to move this by 75 two times, which is 150. One. Oh, forgot the truck. Oh, the trucks are not actually in here. Where are the trucks for this? Here they are. They're down here. 
put it into car four. Almost released it that way too, mind you. All right. One, two. You see this this thing right here, this black line that's following it? This is called a rod. That's how you connect the train cars with a rod. It's called a rod. Okay. R O D. You can make them through here. Okay. See, it says rod and they're connected with attachments. See, every coupler on this train has an attachment on it. You see? So if I was actually, if I was to make a eight car, which is what I'm going to do now, because why not? Okay. I just moved it by 75 because the train length is 75, right? First thing you're going to do is obviously be smart uh collision groups turn them on so i can select the train okay um okay i will click light there you go and click other light okay turn this off and this off make light glass and make the color fossil while it's under glass do the same thing here change this uh this two okay glass persimmon no cocoa and make sure that the spotlights are off awesome okay great all right awesome so now a rod which will connect the both of them it's very simple all i did there was i just disabled the light so it doesn't look stupid okay this isn't mbta we don't drive with our tail lights on especially in between the train cars uh with you know like bart does um last thing to finalize what you just did you want to go into the front model here delete the body velocity that's in here because this will cause you problems the way this train is scripted and how the, the <laughs> chassis works that will cause you issues the last thing you want to do or some one of the last things you want to do delete the semi uh simple train bv script from here as well as the train controls from this folder or from this drive seat and disable the drive seat. Why? You don't want people taking control of the train from the middle. It's not like they can anyways, because there's no uh, movement there, but they would be able to mess with the doors and stuff. If you still want it in there, fine, but just be wary. Okay. All right. Uh, disable the seats. You can just do it by turning on the, uh, turning off the can touch or just by disabling the seat down here. One of the last things you want to do is rename it, uh, especially if you use a spawner that will teleport the train to a different, like different spawn points. Just rename this as, you know, if you want to do working car numbers, you're going to have to rename it anyways. So just do it now. You know what I mean? So car six, okay. Car seven and car eight. There it is. Just like that. I'm going to delete this and undelete it so that it actually goes correspondingly. As you can see, car front, car two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is great. Um, and because of how I've scripted this, it doesn't matter how many cars you add onto it, it'll always work. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You could add like a hundred cars and it'll still work for the whole entire train, all the functions and stuff. So if I press play and hope that the train doesn't delete itself and I sit in the seat and I open the doors and change the sign. Uh, this is non-service. I'm going to change it to, damn, none of these routes are fucking, all right. Uh, R46 is run on the W and the W goes to, where the fuck is the, do I not have any W destinations, bro? Oh, they're right here. Uh, uh what the dude? Oh, here, go. there you go. Perfect. All right. If I go down the whole length of the train, you guys saw no extra scripting. It did it on its own. That's how I script my stuff. So it automatically just grabs everything based on name. So this is now a R46W train that goes to Detmars Boulevard. What's good? All right. Anyways, it was that simple. And if I want to drive the train, as you can see, it has a Q and E to like open and close the doors. If I want to drive the train, the whole train moves with me now. That's what that rod is for. Rods make sure that the train stays together. Yeah. Now, one final thing that I will uh, show you before uh, I end this is the dual cab operations. This is not difficult. Okay. This is very easy and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do, watch this. I'm going to blow your mind. You're going to take all the stuff from here, all the stuff from, from this, uh, from this script. Actually, before we do anything. Okay, perfect. We're going to take everything that's in this drive seat. 
go to car eight. See if there's a drive seat in here. Yep, there's a drive seat in car eight, but it is disabled because it doesn't have its can touch on. So what I'll do, actually, I'll keep this. Uh, uh, oh, it's also disabled on here. I will keep the can touch off or actually I'm gonna keep it on. Right. And the seat's not going to be disabled. And we've just pasted everything. No, we didn't. We were going to have to paste this. Don't don't delete this. I mean, even if you do, it doesn't matter. But just don't because it's going to spawn in the game anyways. Uh, this just means that it can be touched. So don't even don't even worry about it. Um, all right. Now, the train is not going to drive from back here. Obviously, there's one last thing you need to do. OK, uh, if you want to make it so that it enables the taillights and the headlights and stuff on on its own, you would have to put the taillights and the headlights in a model and script it so that when the person sits in the seat, it changes the headlights to that. Again, if you don't know how to do this, you can comment on my Discord server if you're in it, or you can just look up tutorials online or just ask in the comments and I will help you with it. If it becomes something that a lot of people want to do, then I will just update the train so that it has it. Uh, so that it has it. Yeah, there you go. My English is pristine. So that it has it. Uh, so just let me know. But you would put this back here and then make an extra new script. Okay. I'm just. Gonna, I'm. I'm not even gonna go crazy with this. I'm just gonna show you how to juke it. So in this script, what you want to do is, um, if script or actually, what you want to do is script dot parent dot technically i don't need to do a dot drive thing so just script dot parent dot changed right connect function and i'm gonna explain what this does all this is doing is that it's gonna it's gonna every time something changes in the seat whether it's the throttle or something else it'll know and it'll it'll fire this function is what we call it firing a function and what we'll do is if script dot parent dot throttle equals one let's say then right and watch i'm gonna show you how to juke the script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot parent dot front dot main dot body dot drive dot throttle equals negative one there's better ways to do this but just to get this out of the way this is how you do it with this or actually i should just release the eight car as its own thing with dual cab ops for anyone who needs it because it's gonna i know people are gonna ask so i'm probably just gonna do that uh, but yeah, equals negative one else. If a script dot parent dot throttle equals negative one, just copy this line down here. Oh, wait, got to remove this. Then. Okay. Make this positive one. You just want to basically do the opposite of everything. Why is this broken? Else if script. Oh, because else, not else if. Else script. Oh, wait. Zero. All right, there you go. So now, basically, every time you do something in the front, it's going to, or in the back, it's going to try to juke the front into doing a function, uh, which the throttle's in the front of the train. So, yeah. Glad you understood. All right, I uh, need to go soon because somebody keeps spam calling my phone. I guess I'm important. So I'm gonna have to release two versions of this, both with dual cab, which is the four car and then the eight car version. But effectively, I've taught you everything you need to know. Bro, it, if you don't know scripting, don't mess with anything just because it's gonna break stuff. Okay, okay. Uh, later, losers. <laughs> don't actually get offended by that. Okay, thanks.